today's review will be on this all new tooled steam locomotive from Hornby. This all new tooled steam locomotive from Hornby got announced in I believe the 2023 range and this one is the black 5 in the LMS or the class 5 in the black livery of the LMS and it's been about 20 years since Hornby did a retool of a Black 5. I do have a Black 5 in my collection and that is the railroad one. But I thought I'd take a look at this new one to see what it's all about. So the product code you need for this one is R3024 and it's DC ready. But if you want to convert it for DC, see, it's a 21 pin or you can use their new phone app they have and it can do second radius according to the box. From here the locomotive looks very very smart and I can see Hornby have gone to town on it from the look of it already. So let's get into the review and see what it's all about shall we? Starting off at the detail bag and the booklet you get with this new tooled Black 5 by Hornby. Let's start with the booklet. So on the booklet you get the usual general information, the running hints, Routine maintenance and motor chassis and lubrication stuff on the first page. And then if you turn it over, it tells you where to lubricate. It tells you about the DCC fitting and sound, which is in the tender. It tells you how to take the tender shell off as well. Then on the next page over, we have the detail parts and where they go and what you get. If you add certain things, you can't have a front coupler. And then on another door page, you get the Hornby social media stuff. The engine shared, what social media they are on, which is all of them. You also get a page about the Leco Tender connection as well, and then some safety notes and spare parts and what to do about that. There is also a good page on the head code lamps that are fitted to the model. It is currently on a H, which is through freight or a ballast train, but you can change them if you want to and it told you how to do that. I believe you need some soldering skills. If I have this correct, I'm not very good at soldering skills, so I'll just leave mine as it is. Now we move on to the bag of accessories. The bag is a receivable bag, which is good. So you get the chain guard plate. You also get the front steps for right and left. You get drain cart cinders times two. You get the LMS style snowplow. You also get the BR style snowplow as well, which is great. This is an LMS one. Great rigging for the locomotive as well. The tender one's already applied. You get the lower vat pipe. You get the coupling hook and coupling. You also get the bogey nem pocket, a tablet catcher. You get painted crew, a driver and a fireman. Smoke box lamp bracket side. You also get foot plate lamp brackets and you get a foot plate lamp assembly times two. It does say if some won't fit if you want certain accessories to go on the locomotive. But these quite a lot by the looks of it. So now we move on to the front of the locomotive. So at the front of the locomotive you do get some guard eyes, knock stuff off the tracks. You also get the pocket and the coupler I believe are in the detail bag if you want to add them. There's also a snow plow to go on the front if you want to do that. We do have metal sprung buffers which is a great touch. We have a buffer beam and shanks in red. The buffer beam doesn't have any rivets or anything on it. The only rivets to have are for the buffers themselves to put in place. There's a few holes for the details to add yourself. And we also have, I think it's a vacuum pipe or an air pipe there too in black applied at the factory. Moving on up, we have, technically we have three lamp irons, but one has a working lamp on it. Like I said in the detail part, it's set for the H diagram on your booklet, which is through freight and a ballast train. These lights do work, the top and the bottom one do work. Go forward, but when you go backwards, as far as I'm aware from the footage I have seen, they don't go red, but they do work. If you want to change them, you can. It's all in the instruction leaflet you get with the model. We also have a few hand grabs or handrails there, well, really tiny ones, and there's two little holes in the chassis of the buffer beam. You can just about see it hopefully in the photo I use. There's some steps, there's some supporting beams as well. We also have a shed code too, which I'll put up now once I know what it is. We have the smoke box dart and the hinges and supports for that in silver, which is a lovely touch. We also have a separate applied number of this locomotive on the door, which is 5200. And then we have another working lamp at the top for that bracket. There is holes there for the details if you want to change it and customize it to your preference. And then we have the chimney as well. So if we now do a side view of the locomotive, there is some differences around the other side, which I'll go through now. So around the other side, we have a few pots that have been painted. I think they are the sanding pots or lubrication pots. They have been painted on the running board. 
Fade out, that's the only difference. Most of the detail is around this side. So this is a standard design locomotive. It's a 460. That means there's no wheels underneath the cab. All the axles on the wheels, even the front bogey wheels, have been painted in silver and it looks quite fetching. All the valve work and the rods, they are in metal and they look wonderful when they go round. Around the cylinder, we do have some lining on that. We also have some picked out painting in silver of, of parts and then we have a gold tap. The gold tap is around the other side. We also have a builder's plate on the support going down to the buffer beam. And from here you can see some of the hand grabs around the front of the locomotive. We also have a reversing rod around this side. We have some piping that goes into a tube for heating the coaches up and brakes, I believe, from watching a video on the NRM's YouTube page. They all picked out in gold. We have more handrails. We have some washout plugs as well, and we only have a little bit of lining in red, which is at the front of the locomotive. And we have some lovely lining on the running plate. To me, from this angle where the chimney is, it does look like a slightly matte finish compared to the rest of the locomotive, which I do like. If I have missed anything around this side, I do apologise. There's also some gold piping underneath the running board on both sides, which hopefully we'll see later. Let's move on to the cab. And the cab side does have lots of rivets. There is lots of rivets on this locomotive. So like I said, there's no wheels underneath the cab, but we do have some steps. We also have some piping under there in a copper or gold. We have lining around the outside of the cab and it's lovely done, very intricate. We have the LMS style numbering, which is 5200. We have flush glazing in the windows that have the glazing. And then we have a shield for the crew to look out. And then you can see the doors too um, for the cab and tender. So now we come to the part in most modern days reviews that people like, and that is the cab detail. And Hornby have not let us down, and they've also made it easy for people to see what's in the cab or in the front of the tender. It's just a push fit tender and loco connection. You just hear a click, and you know it's done properly. And it's again, pull it away, just gently push them away from each other, and you hear a click, you know they're disconnected. You have a male part and a female part. That's all you have, and it saves on the wires or screws that Hornby used to use, which I don't mind. So let's go with the cab. This being a modern day locomotive from Hornby. As you can already tell, it has lights at the front. It also has a flickering firebox on this model, which is a premium feature. We also have, which I've mentioned, cab doors and handrails. And these are four plate, but mine's stuck up. I don't want to move it, I don't want to break any parts. So in the cab, we have a silver painted, is it a reverser? It's to make the loco move anyway, mine's gone blank. We also have everything painted in there. We have brown seats. I believe we have some gold piping and we may even have some dial uh, numbers on the dials with a white background. There could also be a wood flooring in there too. The glazing you see in there is flush fitted and it could even be separately applied as well. Do apologize if I don't know my parts very well. As we move along to the front of the tender, the front of the tender is generally in black. We have a few cupboards. We have some coal sticking out. That coal doesn't move when you release the coal from the tender. It just stays there as far as I'm aware. We also have some printing details as well and some separately applied fire moons tools. I think it's for the water and brakes, I believe they are there. And we also have some buffers, sort of, on the bottom of the tender, which is correct for this model. As we now move on to the side of the tender, both sides of the tender are exactly the same. So we have some lining around the edge of the tender. The tender does curve upwards at the top. We also have separately applied metal handrails at either end of the tender, which are painted black. We have the LMS printed on the tender, which is crisply applied. All the printing on the model is crisply applied. I don't believe this tender has any rivets. Then down below we have the metal wheels, axles and springs to go with it and some steps at either end where the handrails are. As we now do a look at the back of the tender. The back of the tender does have the NEM pocket and coupler already applied. We also have metal sprung buffers. The buffer beam and housing again is in red, much like the front. We've, we have a few rivets on there and a hook, and we have some sort of piping applied, which is half painted as well, which is correct. As we move on up, yes, as you can see right in the center, we do have a light, and this light does work in both directions, and it's a good touch. It reminds me of the turbo motive that Hornby did, but I don't think you can move this backlight, and I don't think if you press the sides, I don't think it comes on and off 
but I'll find out and let you know. So we have a bit of lining around here. We have also have handrails and six steps and we have two lots of plaques as well. And then down below again, we have, I think it's three or two lamp irons. So as we now do an air review on top of the tender. Let's start in the usual place. We do have some rivets on top of the tender. We also have a separately applied hand grab for the water filler cap. And then we have one big dome and two small domes, which I think for air will check the water. They are there, I think they're separately applied as well. And at the corner of the tender at the back, you do have some hooks to, I think, to put tarpaulin or stuff over the tender to the roof of the cap, if I have that correct. You can also see some of the lining from the tender sides as well. The coal load itself is removable, but for me, it's a little tight to get out. And the coal load does look re realistic to me but I'm not an expert. And then we have the cupboards at the end of the tender as well towards the cab. So now we move on to the top of the locomotive itself. Let's start in the usual place, which is the cab roof. The cab roof, it does have a straight rain ducket. The top of the roof to me looks like it's done in a matte black version. It's not as shiny as the boiler or the tender. We do have a working vent there as well. And I think there's a few rivets too. As we move across now, Hopefully from this angle, you can see we have some lining around the windows and around the top of the cab from the outside. And you can also see the flush glazing of the windows. From here, you can also see the whistle and safety roll. Which I think they're both metal, which is fantastic. And there's a few washout plugs dotted around too. And then we move along a bit more. We do come to the lines where the boiler banding should be, but it's not. This is a basic livery. We have a dome, we have handrails, we have hand grabs. We also have steam pipes dotted around on the boiler. We do have some lining when we get to the chimney, like I mentioned before. And the chimney area does seem to be in a matte black again. It looks fantastic. And then we have the chimney and a few sanding parts and lubrication parts there. And then we have the lights and the buffers at the end. As we now do an underneath look at the locomotive, as you can tell from this view, we do have that copper piping on both sides of the model underneath the running plate and the cab. It's a great touch by Hornby. You can also see the ties of the wheels are, me are metal. We have four screws to take off the base key plate. I'm 99% sure it's a contact base, base keeper plate. So it has like two contacts to get the electric through. And you can also see that these at least six driving wheels pick up on the locomotive itself. Don't think there is any on the front pony tuck wheels. Of course we have the brake shoes and brakes and sanding pipes all line up with the wheels as well. There's some holes for the brake rigging if you want to add it yourself. And then we get the usual signs from Hornby made in China. As we now move over to the local and tender connection and the tender itself. This is, like I said before, it's a push fit locomotive. So there's a male part and a female part. You just push them together very gently. You hear a click. The loco does come already together. It's one and they are easy to take apart. From this view, you can see that the roof of the cab is in cream. We have the brake rigging already applied to the tender. We do have copper pickups on the tender. It's on the six wheels of the tender. We also have a water scoop and we have an end pocket at the end for the coupler. They, I think it's two or four screws. It does show you in the leaflet how to take the loco top, uh, tender top off if you want to DC fit it or the sound and all that good stuff. So yeah guys, that's it on the tracks. Next up will be the usual second radius and points test. Going off the box, it says it can do second radius and so does the website. And let's see if we can manage the points that I have here. So here goes, shall we? TCC ready, that's not bad. We're talking 20. And let's see if we do it backwards. It is a little slow going backwards, I will admit that. But it's pretty nice. Yeah, I managed it both directions perfectly fine on DCC ready.
So yeah, it managed his second radius and the point test pretty fantastic if I'm honest with you. I was quite surprised how smooth it was for a DC ready locomotive. So next up I will do some slow speed and find it a train to pull and see you at the end. So here goes. Twenty. That's wonderful and smooth. No issues on the third radius point. I would zoom in, but my camera don't like it. So guys, that's the end of the review and the running session. Before I give my opinion, I'll tell you what it was pulling, which was a few Graham Ferris coaches and a Hornby Mark 1 railroad style brake at the end, just because I don't have a lot of LMS coaches. I know the head codes say it should be freight or ballast train, but I did that in my railroad review of the Black 5 that Hornby have, and I wasn't willing to do it again. So the price that I paid, I paid two nineteen from Tops Trains. They don't have a website, but the going price on a model of this on any of the websites like Kerno, Rails of Sheffield, TMC, you are talking between two hundred and six to two hundred and nine upwards, give or take, depending on which shop you go to. From Hornby themselves, it's two hundred and twenty nine and ninety nine pence. If I'm honest with you guys, for a loco of this quality, I'm willing to pay the Hornby price. It's probably Hornby's best LMS model or locomotive that they have made. It doesn't carry anything from the railroad or the Black Fire that Hornby released 20 odd years ago. You have lamps at front and back of the steam engine. You can change or customise the lamps on the front to fit whatever rolling stock you are running. I'm just going to keep it as that because I don't have the skills to mess about with that and I don't want to break it. We have a matte finish on the roof and I think we have a matte finish on the chimney smoke box area as well. The coal load is removable. We have separately applied piping everywhere you look. The printing is crisply done on everything. There's no blotches or glue marks or anything like that. I can't seem to find any on my model. We have metal whistles and safety rods, which is a fantastic touch. Hornby have tooled up for several other variants of the class. We have the new connector of Loco and Tender, which works perfectly fine. It's easier to get in to put crew in the cab or weather it up, maybe. I don't know. You can do it much more easy now. It will do second radius, as you can tell off my board. It will also do the points too. From honest, the only slight issue that I have, and it's only a slight issue, it doesn't affect anyone, 
was the wheels on my locomotive came dirty and my track's now dirty. That's the only issue I have, but that's a five minute cleaner track and the wheels, that's all it is. That's the only issue I can find if I had to find one. I do try and be down the center and I can't find anything bad about this model. It is Hornby's best LMS model, possibly their best model ever at this point in time. All the people involved in the project from Montana to Simon Kohler to the design team. Full credit to you guys, this is a absolutely wonderful locomotive. It should hopefully win some awards when the awards come around. As you tell, I can't say enough good things about this. It has impressed me a lot and I look forward to whatever Hornby decide to release in the future. Big fan of this model. If you want them people that likes to wait for it to be on sale, that's fine. But for me, I'm happy to pay the prices that I paid, even the high price I paid at top strings. I don't mind paying that. So for me, it's a big, big, big thumbs up. I absolutely love this model. That is my review and my opinion on this model. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Please take care and thank you for watching and bye.